if I continue in that fall, because all I hear at that time from the devil is that you're no good, you're not going to make it, you, you, you suck, you, you this and that, God will not accept you, all of these blunt lies. How do I deal with a sin that I'm addicted to? I want to stop, but even when I do for a while, I always end up going back to it. Um, I think that's a very legit question, and, and many have that same question. Uh, I, th I think, again, uh, the, one of the main spiritual keys to the spiritual life in general that maybe we don't speak about uh, enough, I would say, is perseverance. Uh, without perseverance in prayer or, or without perseverance in sin, spiritual life is simply impossible. Again, we don't, we're not robots. We don't just change the program, upgrade the software, press on a button, and things end up being fine. Sin ends up being rooted in us and does require a lot of struggle. So uh, I'll read from you uh, for you uh, a couple of quotes of St. John Chrysostom. Um, the first one, it says, when the arrogant falls, he feels surprised. Meaning, I, I think, you know, I'm above sin in a sense, so I feel surprised. Regrets and loses hope. Yet the humble person knows his weakness, is not surprised by an action or behavior, but regrets with fresh hope in the mercy of the infinite. So we ought to regret with fresh hope in the mercy of the infinite. There's a nice saying that I'm going to paraphrase, but it says something along, along the lines of, uh, even if your sin like is so um, like immediate, uh, eminent, in the sense that your, your clothes still smells like sin, like it's so fresh to sin. Still, get up and pray. Renew your recon reconciliation. Get back with your unit, in unity with God. I think this is something that is crucial. Like if you, if you look at how we ought to live, let's say on a monthly basis, let's say, so I'm, I'm struggling against a certain sin. I've been struggling very well for the last five, six days. On day seven, I fell, right? If I continue in that fall, because all I hear at that time from the devil is that you're no good, you're not going to make it, you're, you're, you suck, you, you this and that, God will not accept you, all of these blunt lies. And if I believe them, I remain fallen, right? And then I might get up, you know, a week later for two, three days, fall again and so on. So if I look at that month, you know, if I don't go back up and persevere against sin, half the month I'll be fallen. But if I do persevere, every time I fall, if I get right back up, you know, and I continue struggling, and then I fall again a few days later, I get up again and continue struggling, you'll find that at the end of the month, you maybe fell four times, five times. And that there's a huge difference between four or five times and 15 times. And that's on a monthly basis. Imagine times 12, right? Take that year, multiply it by 10. So this idea of hope in Christ is true. And all this happens through his grace. But there is perseverance there. So I'll read you another quote, and I'll end with this from St. John Chrysostom as well. He says, listen to this. He says, the fall of man is not a cause for sadness, but rather lingering long in the fall. So that's what's sad, when a man lingers in the fall. To make a mistake is a human weakness, but to continue in sin, it is no longer a human matter, but diabolical because the devil keeps on telling us that we're no good, we're good for nothing. So we don't press on a button. I mean, if we are addicted to things, we need to struggle. It will get there. Many people uh, do get rid of their sins. It require weeks and months, sometimes years, regardless. But when you offer that fresh repentance, God has accepted you already. He accepts everybody that repents. And I mean, if I can say it simply, when you have, let's say... Um, it's a bit more complicated than that, but I'll, I'll still say. Uh, so let's say I have a, a very good friend, whomever that is, right? And we get some sort of disagreement between us. Let's say I'm angry at him. And then we forgive each other. When we forgive each other, do we restart back, you know, at the first step of our relationship? Or do we just continue from where we are? Obviously, it's the latter. Again, it's not that simple. There is a mystery of the image of God within us, but this is um, the direction that we ought to take to always have a fresh hope in Christ, 
never lose hope because that means it's the end. This the beginning of the end. Losing hope is the beginning of the end, but that's not what Christianity is about. We are able in Christ. So sorry, I, I may add something very quickly, just uh, on a practical level as well. Um, I've heard that once, especially with pornography and things like that. Um, like a, a rule of thumb is, let's say there's a certain sin that happens a certain amount of times in the day. You can try to slash it by one third or one half, right? And try not to exceed that. Obviously, it's much better to uh, to have zero as your objective. But if ever you are not able to get there because it's a really, really deep addiction, then cut it in half or cut it in one third. And that would mean that you've done a lot of good progress, right? And then later on, as you continue on that path, eventually the sin will be no more. Thank you. Father, if I may uh, uh, humbly chime in on what Utzik just said. Of course, Abe. You know, I, I remember reading this a while ago about how, um, you, you know, we, we focus, like St. John Chrysostom says, that we're surprised when we fall. And we're, I think a part of why we're surprised when we fall or we react to the, fall, to, to the fact that we tripped up or, or stumbled because our attention is on that. Our attention is on safeguarding the pride that is focused about maintaining our self-image, right? Which can sometimes be, in reference to what Father Peter spoke about, can be mistaken for self-esteem as well, you know, but that's neither here nor confused for <laughs> self-esteem. But when we, uh, I think we focus on that, even though the demons are not focusing on that, you know, the demons are focusing on keeping you there. Yeah. That's what they're aim is you know what's the point of it's like saying somebody's aim main point is to get you through the doors of the store but it's not to actually shop around and buy something right or you know or actually ordering and the, the the demons rejoice in keeping you in the prison that is caused by the by that is caused by all of the binding and sin that weighs us down and and enslaving us yeah, that ultimately we killing sure us. that we, we will end, uh, you know, this yeah, God. Yeah, exactly. The, the Lord of glory himself, the God-man himself, joins us in Hades, mm. but doesn't stay there. He joins us in all of that, which w w that it means to be corrupted and broken and, 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 and fallen in terms of, not in terms of the sin, but in terms of actually entering into death experiencing death which is the culmination the climax and you know the high point the, the paramount point of all of what it means to be to, to be not god who is life <laughs> who is life himself right he dies and he goes and he enters into hades through the cross but that's not the end the 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 the, the shaming the shaming and the burning of the demons is in his rising up and so he came to himself and said, and rose up and said, I'll return to my father's house. You know, the, the, uh, when speaking of the, of the unsaved son, as the fathers call him, the prodigal son, you know? Mm. So, yeah. I think we need to focus on getting up rather than, you know, like what's like said, you know? Not, Absolutely. <laughs> like said, Sorry, I'm not saying anything different. I just no, no, realized no. that we wasted our time. <laughs> like not at all. To, to, it's very beautiful. To piggyback off of what you just said, Abu Nakrundos, and I think this was really, and it goes back to the author that Father Peter was referencing before. Um, Father Peter was referring to Father Lepjolet, or, you know, the monk from the, or the priest from the Eastern Church, or the monk from the Eastern Church. Um, he has this little book called In Thy Presence. Um, that I've actually been listening to. And if anybody wants to hear a good collection of really beautiful Orthodox books, there's a SoundCloud account called The Way Audiobooks. We'll share the link in the Facebook group. It's a great resource for those of you who want to listen to, to beautiful Orthodox books. Um, I'm listening to it uh, right now, in, just in my travel from, place, from one place to another. And in the book, In Thy Presence, um, Father Lev Gillette talks about this whole idea of how it is that, you know, he's speaking as if he were Christ speaking to his beloved. And he's saying, you forget that I am there with you. You forget that I am present at the moment of your fall. And rather than turning and looking for me while you are fallen, 
you make that moment even about yourself and you look only to yourself. You feel guilty, you feel ashamed. You, you think about what stature you now possess in, the, in my presence. And, and the problem is that even in my fall, somehow I find a way to be proud. Somehow I find a way to inflate my ego, to even make that about me, rather than joining the psalmist and saying, uh, if I make my bed in Hades, you are there. I can still find him in that fall. And, and it's by his grace that we are elevated. And there's a mystery there, right? It's very difficult to understand how even in the fall, I can turn to him. While I'm falling, I can turn to him. And as long as we keep our eyes on him, then there is hope, right? I think it was um, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III who talked about how it is that the Lord will never ask us how many times we fell, mm. but rather he will ask us, why did you not get up? Right? What, was, there, was it a lack of hope? Was it a lack of my mercy? Was it a lack of my love? So you just reminded me of that, Abuya, and we'll, we'll share the, uh, the, the, the account for all of those who want to listen to some beautiful audio books. It's a very uh, nice account. I definitely encourage it. Mm. Thanks, Abuya. God reward those that you love. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> I think Mar, 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 Mar Isaac. I think Mar Isaac, to the same note that Otsak just mentioned from uh, Pope Shenouda, he says, this life has been given to you for repentance. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then Abba, John Saba says, if anyone believes that there is an access to repentance, safe for prayer, except for prayer, then he is deceived by the demons. Mm. You know? Uh, you know, if you if you pray, the fear of God and contrition will be the fruit thereof. Contrition will lead you to repentance, to be broken in front of God. God does not despise this. Anyway, sorry. S such unconditional love that is truly beyond our understanding. It's so sad when when God, you know, again, who is the being that source of, of love, you know, at, at that level. And, and when we find, you know, people trying to seek happiness and joy in anything else and in vain, um, we really pray that people get to discover who God is and, and all this unconditional love beyond the filters that we put on him. Um, because truly, you know, other than that, we're not alive. Um, he's truly the being that we ought to unite with. Uh, there's no other way to live life, truly. You know?